But yeah, speaking of sexual harassment, that's what we're discussing next on The New Day on TV3. And in the studio, so I have Madam Susan Aite. Uh, she's the Acting Executive Director for International Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA Ghana. And she joins us. Today, we wanted to uh, shift the conversation from just, you know, institutions uh, to the workplace as well to find out how sexual harassment can be handled there as well. But uh, we'll, we'll just open it up so that anybody who wants to contribute and has a story to share, they will let us know. But good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Bella. All right, so I, I was just trying to read a bit about sexual harassment because mm -hmm. especially with what has happened with the expose by BBC, mm -hmm. people are trying to understand what really the definition of sexual harassment is. Mm -hmm. And clearly there's no law that protects women when it comes to sexual harassment mm -hmm. in particular. So before we start, I would want you to touch on that, explain to us what it is. What is sexual harassment and what is not? because we are confused <laughs> <laughs> but it's a shame that we have not been able to define actually what sexual yeah. harassment is because it's been with us you know for decades mm -hmm. and I remember when I was doing the research you know for this show and I came across Professor Kenatifa's uh, you know um, statements mm -hmm. and he said that there's no judicial definition of sexual harassment yeah. in our Constitution to mm -hmm. date so it's basically it's implied and so for, I mean, for lawyers or human rights lawyers, you'd have to really pick up, you know, pick out and be able to um, use it to address a situation. So Article 15.1 mm. and our constitution, it provides that the dignity of the human being okay. shall be inviolable. And so you see that there's nothing there as really telling you mm -hmm. that, you know, this is specific to uh, sexual harassment, but it's implied. And so you can use, you know, um, it to address the okay. situation. Okay. And then Article 17, 2, again, of the Constitution says, a person shall not be discriminated against on the grounds of gender, race, color, ethnic origin, mm. and religion, creed, social, economic condition, etc. However, the labor, you know, policies, mm -hmm. or the labor act uh, provides at with some policies that, you know, protect women in the formal workspace. Okay. But, and recently, the informal workspace was not actually addressed. So for ladies working in restaurants, in the, what we call the chop bars, mm. bush canteens, and stuff like that, they are not protected. Uh, yes, we're not protected. But um, the International Labour Organization has come up with um, one that protects women now in the informal space. Okay. And so it's um, 190 and one, Convention 190 and 189. And so now it behoves upon our government to actually also. ratify, sign it, and then we domesticate it into our laws. Before but, we can then begin to actually use that yeah. to help, you know, our sisters who are working in the informal sector and who are faced with sexual harassment. So from what you're saying, mm -hmm. uh, what I'm understanding is mm -hmm. that there is a separate definition for what sexual harassment is mm -hmm. based on the situation or the environment that you mm -hmm. find yourself mm -hmm. in. Am I yeah, right? Yeah, but you find that for certain organizations, since you're talking about the workplace, the, who have sexual harassment policies, the, the key ways that would, you know, jump Determine, at you. Yeah. Really. So it's like, for instance, to talk about it's an unwelcome act. Yeah. It has to be sexual, okay, okay, in nature. And mm. so what I have gathered from, you know, some of the things I was looking at, it's, it's a violation of a person's human rights. Okay. Okay, uh, to your dignity, mm. to your self-esteem. Okay. okay uh -huh. And then it's non-discrimination. And then it says it's deliberate. Okay. Okay. So it's repeated. It's unsolicited. It's verbal mm. comments, it's gestures or physical contact of a sexual nature, hmm. which is unwelcome by the recipient. So you stand behind the person's back and you hug the person, doesn't want it. And that is. The, uh, rub your, you know, your front against the person's back. And then sometimes we're verbal, you know, um, stuff that come out. You're yeah. The, you are, yeah, they're the most beautiful girl in the office. That could be. And, and, and yes, and it's repeated. And you don't want oh. it. It's unwelcome. If it's welcome, that's a difference, you know, working. Okay. But if it's unwelcome, you kind of feel uncomfortable okay. when this person particularly says. And if it's coming from somebody who is your superior, so there's a power relationship, you know, to it. Ah. So if it's my superior and the person has that power and that authority to either demote me, to promote me, to give me certain allowances, mm. then I find myself in a very difficult situation. What do I do okay. in this particular space? Okay. So I define, I mean, the person that mm -hmm. the advances are being made as the mm -hmm. one who decides That's what right. is sexually harassing for exactly. her and so not. if you don't consent to it, then it's something you don't want. It's unwelcome. So the key thing there is it has to be unwelcome. Okay. And it has to be sexual in nature. Hmm. 
So, like, you know, people would force, you know, to actually give you a kiss. Yeah. Which you don't really want. It's unwelcome. Mm. People will fondle your breast your, 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 as you walk along, pat your, you on the bum. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, 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 when you protest, it's like you are absurd. I mm. mean, this is something which is, I mean, normal. It happens. So exactly. we have actually taken, that's why Ohene was asking, why is outreach? Mm -hmm. So basically within our culture, we understand that men are allowed to behave that way, basically mm. because of the kind of system we are operating in. So it's okay. a, a male-dominated society. Yeah. People will use the word patriarchy. Exactly. Or misogyny. Yes. So this is a male dominant oh. society. Mm -hmm. And so then you, the woman, you are seen as a sex object, as a chattel, belonging to the person's, you know, assets. Hmm. So even sometimes when somebody even says my woman. Yeah. You kind of wonder, I mean, what do you mean what by my woman? What do you mean, you mean by I, is the person your asset an asset to you or you are seeing the person as, you know, an individual being. So even sometimes all of the words now, it's becoming a very difficult so that's why we need to come up with a clear cut definition within of our it. institution. Which is what we don't laws, have. Which, and so all that we have is this implied. And we know that sexual harassment is something that, you know, um, deals with your self esteem. Okay. It also deals with your dignity as yeah. a person. And so you use then the Constitution the article, you know, um, 15, you know, uh, okay. and then the 17. Are, are we not getting yeah. things confused then? I mean, I totally get mm. your mm. definition mm. and explanation mm. and all of that. But the men are now saying that it's even difficult to compliment a woman mm. now. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, if I say you're the most beautiful woman around and you feel that that is a form of harassment, then you can take me on. And that scares a lot of people because then they don't know when they can approach when they have to you know pull away and all of that are we not putting ourselves in a very difficult so situation it is i say you're the most beautiful woman mm -hmm. there's a certain you know connotation or certain underlining tone that you know this is a joke okay so if it's sexual in nature then the person begins to proposition you ask you for dates ask you for for sexual favors mm. begins to try and touch you Okay. Do you understand? So all these things are signals that tells that you tell. that. So there's, that it shouldn't be confused at all because okay. if you're a woman and a man propositions you and you like the person, it's uh, kind of mutually, you know, okay. uh, consent. It's fine. But when you don't want it, you just know, I mean, as a woman, that, listen, I don't want this. Okay. This is not what I want. And so you may come up with saying, listen, stop this. I think you are invading my space or my privacy. And the person disobeys and continues. And continues, yes. So it has to be repeated. It has to oh, be something okay. that you have not even solicited for. So fine, maybe you haven't asked the guy to compliment you. But the way the guy compliments you just lets you know. I mean, for us women... We are very discerning. I mm. mean, you can know that this is, you know, yeah. somebody who is just actually being plain nice, appreciating something which is beautiful. Okay. There was a recent incident mm. uh, at an awards event where an award presenter, mm. you know, made some comments mm. about a presenter's, you know, backside. backside yes. And it was posted on social media. And, you know, there are people who have, have diverse opinions on it. Mm -hmm. Some think that it was just a joke. Mm -hmm. um, others think that he didn't have the right to make those comments mm -hmm. on that stage. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we're torn between whether it is sexual harassment or not. You are saying that if it's repeated, mm -hmm. then it is sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. But in this case, where it happened only once, mm -hmm. let's say someone talks about, you know, me having... Women Men have big boobs and sometimes mm -hmm. men make fun of it mm -hmm. or they compliment them mm -hmm. for it mm -hmm. if you say it just once do i have a right to call that sexual harassment it, it's a dicey situation it's just once yeah and it's not repeated yeah even though it's unwelcome do you understand okay and so you may probably that is where the situation is so the person exactly. may just pass over it and just ignore it you, and that is where the issue is now Okay. where you may ignore it but then it may come up again but for what you just described this is a, a person's you know i mean personal i mean private body and in a public space yeah it's certainly not something which is i mean uh wanted okay do you understand and it's even though it's a joke it's kind of like it's calculated to either um ridicule the person mm -hmm. which is not really and that's why maybe the people who are saying this wrong as are talking are about talking, it so yeah. the person then comes into ridicule so what you said may be innocent but then you have ridiculed the person mm. people pick it up and start actually you know okay um, okay y talking about it and so the first person's self-esteem is mm. now affected okay because there are instances where you just say just one one word and somebody could even go and you know commit suicide, commit suicide just because, because of, of that. what you yeah. say so we have to be very careful in the in what we say but then like i said like you were asking it's very very good question 
um, the issue what we, are, we must look at is is that is it a violation mm -hmm. of a person's human rights? Human right. Is yeah. it a violation of your dignity? Yeah. If it is it I mean self of your self esteem? Do you understand? And, exactly. and let me just read this quickly because okay. uh, it's important. It happened in the workplace, and this is was this is um, the final waste case, which in, now everybody refers to because mm. that's the only one we have in our jurisprudence. And and as they were, they were talking about how somebody who has written a book mm -hmm. um, and defines what sexual harassment in the workplace is. Okay. So it says sexual harassment is any sexually oriented practice that endangers an individual's continued employment. Okay. So it en okay. endangers your employment, your employment. you mm -hmm. know, negatively affects your work performance and uh, or undermines your sense of personal dignity. Mm. So that dignity, you know, keeps coming up. Okay. Now, when I find myself mm -hmm. in such a situation, mm -hmm. I probably approach the person mm -hmm. and, you know, it still continues. Mm -hmm. Where do I move to next? Who do I report to? Exactly. And so this is where in every organization we need to have um, a committee or an investigative body mm. that is responsible for investigating, you know, sexual harassment complaints, okay. which must not be dismissed. Mm. Because sometimes you find out that in many times when the complaint is made the first time, yeah. there's a semblance of investigation going on. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, because most of the time, the person involved could be even, you know, the owner of the, of uh, the, company. Of the company yeah. or in a very high position. Do you understand? Yeah. It kind of like just, you know, um, it's it's, under it's the swept yeah. under the rug, exactly. And that is what, you know, um, calls or that is what signals impunity. So it's like, well, we can do it and get away with it. Mm. I mean, after all, we own the company. After yeah. all, I'm in this position. Do you get it? And so that is what we need to make sure that there's an investigative body. Mm -hmm. I will actually go all out and investigate. And there are sanctions. The sanctions must be applied. Even if it's the CEO? Even if it's the CEO. Okay. And that is why now we need, it means we have to move a step further away from just having the investigative body and making sure that regularly doing staff retreats, mm. um, sexual harassment issues are flagged up okay for both men and women to know how to behave in their in the workspace mm. in the formal workspace okay i like that you mentioned for both men mm. and women yes. women are fond of joking around men it's very easy for you to tap a man's yes. butt and say oh it's soft it's hot mm. or just playfully That's right. make fun That's right. this morning That's i right. you know we're talking about breast cancer mm -hmm. and i could easily touch johnny hughes's chest mm -hmm. and try and squeeze and see if mm -hmm. i could find any lumps mm -hmm. do these men have a right to also now come and accuse women of sexual harassment they do as long as it's this, the same thing, it's it's so unsolicited. It's not only the 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 employment or their position in that space is under threat. Then because if the woman to. says, "If you don't give in, then I'm either going to sack you, yeah. dismiss you, yeah. or even yeah. demote you." They have the right to also come up and, uh, and, and okay. Make a so I report to the right yes. people in yes. the in the workplace. Yeah. Nothing is done. Mm -hmm. Can I escalate it? Can I move out of my company and now go and report to? maybe a lawyer, a police officer, mm -hmm. is that right? Are you I, not breaking You, you can report, I mean, yeah. for the police officer, I'm even wondering how the police officer is going to handle, because most of the time, they don't have that capacity to be able to handle some of these situations. You find that when you go, <laughs> they ask you, what did you do before? They will even laugh at you that, Exa ah, exactly. it's your took a canal That is the thing. Yeah. You see, that is the issue. Mm. And so then we may have to resort to the courts, and that takes time, because even when I was looking at the fun Airways issue, which happened yeah. way back, you know, in the, I think the 1996 or mm. so, they, they, uh, there was continual adjournment. Yeah. So can you imagine this? Uh, it took a long time for them to educate, you know, Shirat to educate on the case. Yeah. And even that the respondent also, you know, uh, um, uh, discounted some of the, um, um, what is it, the conclusions that Shirat, you know, came to. And so certainly that you have to go back again and look within it. But of course, he was called several times and he did not, you know, mm. appear. And he went through his counsel and the counsel at a point in time also said um, he had, you know, he was going to recuse himself from exactly. the case because he couldn't, you know, uh, make contact with the, with the respondent. So, wow. so you can imagine the kind of, you know, um, torture, mental torture this lady, you know, must have, you know, gone yeah. through. Yes. So that means that it will be difficult to make progress. With so for the workspace, it, it certainly has to be the body that has to be in place, the investigative body. Okay. And it certainly has, you know, to apply the sanctions and make sure that whoever it is who is involved is, is actually, you know, sanctioned. Do you think with how we're 
handling this issue. We are making progress in terms of getting the constitution amended to favor sexual harassment as well. In terms of getting an actual law that states that if you make these advancements at me or if you make these comments at me, you might go to jail or you pay a fine. Is that ever going to happen? Nigeria has done it. Okay. They just reintroduced their um, anti, uh, what is it? Sexual harassment. Sexual harassment yeah. in the Senate. It was read yeah. on Wednesday, last mm -hmm. week Wednesday. And mm -hmm. I thought, wow, this is, this is really fast. Yeah. And like Ghana, Ghana, we're going to talk about it all the time. Until somebody really, or the, until there's a mass movement. Is there not a mass movement already? I mean, people are talking they about are talking, it. But where is the movement? Okay. Where do we, at a point in time, are we going to end? Are we going to really rally around? So social media is not enough? So it's not enough. It's, we need to mobilize ourselves. Okay. We're both women and men, we need male allies. Okay. Because from the, some of the calls that you tend to get, you find out that people see it as a joke. Mm -hmm. basically, a lot of people do. Yes, basically because it's been with us for ages. And we have a, a come to us as a norm. And so everybody thinks, well, come on, I mean, you're upset. I mean, and, and, for, and for men, not all men, but let's say before they start, you know, yeah. <laughs> pounding <laughs> some, men, some yes. men, they feel that um, it's against their masculinity when you turn them down. I'm giving you attention and you, and you turn me it. down. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the party space I was in way back ages ago, I mean, this person kept touching me and I said, look, I don't like this. Stop it. Mm -hmm. And it was hell. hell. All hell broke loose. Wow. I mean, I was abused. Never have I ever gone through such a verbal abuse. And I tried to respond, but then the host of the party was a close friend and just winked at me and said, just ignore this man. Hmm. This is serious. See? So it, it, it's like, it does something to their ego. To their, exactly. To, As a man, I've given you attention and you fought me off. How dare you? Mm -hmm. I mean, so, and it just shows you the kind of values that we have in place on women in our society. Yeah. Do you understand? Even in the cultural aspect, uh, you have it, a woman and a young woman and a young man. The young woman has a chance to fill her education. And then the, the man is allowed to go and you mm. are asked to stay back and yeah. do something else. And even it happens, I, I, I realize even with persons with disabilities, yes. the men are allowed to go and pursue the academic you know, ambitions. And the woman is, go learn how to uh, design a dress mm. or you know, something that will give you money. Quickly, and why and you so getting into school and yeah. why are you worrying yourself? Because your disability is seen as a barrier. So even within our, our, our sisters and uh, amongst that group, we are not homogeneous. They also are going to I mean, this kind of situation. My, my final question mm -hmm. before I wrap up. Mm -hmm. So we have women in key positions, mm -hmm. you know, in government, you know, in, in institutions mm -hmm. all across the mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. You're asking for a movement. Mm -hmm. These are the women who have a voice mm -hmm. and they can champion this mm -hmm. initiative. Mm -hmm. Does it not bother you that we don't have that movement starting from these women? It does. Mm. It does bother me. But I, I have a sneaky suspicion that if they don't, and the younger generation would... You know, like we have the pepper dems. Yeah. I mean, they will A lot of people up. are against pepper dem, by the way. Uh, well. Because they if, think they've gotten feminism all wrong. If, <laughs> if, 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 if they're good sides and matter, if you listen to them very well, they certainly have a point. And I, I mean, I doff my hats up to them for okay. being bold enough to actually, you know, come out in this space and, mm. and address uh, some of these issues. Uh, with certainly the allegations going on, feminism, I mean, they say feminism staff, is not hate for that. men. Yes. Um, you know, some it's people just, are believe, using it. For me, I believe in, in, in women and women's livelihood, women's status being, you know, changed from where they are. Okay. You know, I mean, to a better, you know, place. Um, we don't practice feminism that is done really out there in, mm. the, in the Western society. We don't. It's not, it's, it's our, our kind of feminism is not as aggressive as assertive you know yeah um, as as they have there okay there's the religion uh, religious undertones you know that kind of you know affects many women who work within that space mm -hmm. and so you uh, accept the, the fact that the man has to rule the man is probably the head of the home but what you don't want to accept is the fact that you are in subordination just because um, a man is supposed to be the head of the home yeah and you are you know made to undergo certain you know, mm -hmm. discriminatory issue um, you know um, cases or exactly. issues yes so there's a difference between our brand of you know believing in women and what they do you know out there and sometimes for them sometimes at sitting back you may think that there's a strong you know de detestation or resentment you know for everything male which is not you know the same within our space yeah yes yeah so even pepper them haven't even gone to that extreme really hmm. Yeah, and, and already and, people are lashing uh, yes, out at them. Uh, yes, and they are. So, but certainly, even for the women who uh, 
my generation of women and those who are he ahead of me who began this women movement have also, you know, had their own, you know, hmm. uh, um, criticisms as well. All right. Yeah. Well, so thank you so much, Madam Susan Aite. She's the acting executive director for FIDA Ghana. And to a large extent, I believe that she's expatiated on what exactly sexual harassment is. An unwelcome gesture, uh, comment, uh, and a lot of other things. And most importantly, when it's repeated, that's when it becomes sexual harassment. But even if it happens once and it's still a violation of your rights, your dignity, your esteem, yes, right. then you have a right to call it sexual harassment. You are the only person to define it. And so make sure that you don't have people trampling um, you know, on your rights as a woman as well. So thank you so much for joining me awesome. on air. At least now I have an understanding <laughs> so we can fight for it. Uh, and Pepe, you've gotten some big ups from <laughs> Susan as well. Thank you so much for joining me and